welcome. Come in. I'm Tammy Grimes. Some years ago, it was popular to say that in every relationship, there is one who loves and one who is loved. You don't hear that dubious axiom so much of late. Instead, you hear the equally uncertain postulate that the earth is divided into the givers and the takers, which, in the hidden channels of our feelings, contains the same sediment of truth. Given two people, there will always be one who offers love and one who accepts it. I don't know what they're talking about. Darling, darling, relax. Just take it easy. Stanley, I wouldn't do such a thing. I know, I know. I'm not a thief. Of course you're not. But somebody saw me do it. Well, whoever somebody is, is wrong. You believe me, don't you? I swear. Honey, you don't have to swear anything. I believe you, and I love you, and because I love you, I believe you. Our mystery drama, Mind Over Mind, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Jada Rowland. I'll be back shortly with that one. Yes, this is a love story. Rather a strange, a bizarre love story, you may conclude before we are through. But a love story nevertheless. Probably there never was a love story that did not contain elements of the strange, the bizarre. For love itself is strange and contains elements of the bizarre, the incredible, as everyone who has ever loved or been loved very well knows. Our story's title is Mind Over Mind. Itself an odd name for a story. What is she like? I, uh... I don't know her all that well. Do you know her? Oh, um, kind of. Uh, what does that mean? Well, I, I I, never dated her or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Did you date her? Me? Certainly not. I just asked. If, uh, if you didn't date her or anything like that, what did you do? I, I walked her home once or twice. Which? What? Was it once or twice you walked her home? Oh, uh, I I think it was twice I, I walked her home. Where does she live? Ridgeland Avenue between Elmwood and Euclid. With her husband? Or well, does anybody know? Uh, I don't know. You? Uh, there was a man sitting on the porch the times I walked her home. He got up and kissed her. Now, I don't know if he was her husband or her... Uh, not her husband. You didn't think to ask her. Well, how could I ask her? I mean, when you saw her again. Well, it wasn't any of my business. How, how could I ask her? I, I told you, I didn't know her that well. Gee whiz. Okay, okay, okay. All right, now. Now, I don't suppose you know if she's married. Well, I told you, I don't. I don't go around prying into people's private lives. It's none of my business. What they do away from here. So far, we've come up with zilch. Nobody knows anything about, uh... What's the name? Dorothy. Uh, Dorothy Brent. Nobody knows anything about Dorothy Brent, except she lives on Ridgeland Avenue between Elmwood and Euclid with a man who may or may not be her husband. <laughs> Anybody want to add anything to that? I don't. And I can't. I would have a good, but I can't. Yeah. All right. So, let's get her in here. Oh, uh, go easy on her, will you? She's a very nice girl. That remains to be seen, doesn't no, it? No, 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 no. No, she really is. When you meet her, you'll see what we mean. All right, all right. So get her in here. Hey, Jerry, will you? You know her better than I do. But uh, when she finds out, she'll hate me. Dorothy? Uh, Dorothy? Oh, hi, Jerry. <laughs> Getting ready to go home? Yeah. I have to put a roast in the oven. Ooh, a roast. Huh? Living high these days. Oh, I wouldn't say that exactly. Gosh, my wife hasn't bought a roast since uh, I can't remember when. I don't do it too often. Like once a year. See you tomorrow, Jerry. Uh, uh, uh Dorothy, uh, wait a minute, will you? I really ought to get going. I was supposed to tell you something. Oh, what? Uh, uh, 
Uh, Mr. Treadway wants to see you in his office. See me? What about? Search me. I, I, I mean, uh, he'll tell you. He didn't tell you? Oh, he didn't have to. You mean you know? Uh, in a way. Uh, well, what is it? I'd rather Mr. Treadway would tell you. I haven't been in Mr. Treadway's office since the day he hired me. Yeah. Uh, well, um, let's go, shall we? That was a year ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, come on, okay? He's, he's waiting for you. He asked me to come out and get you. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Dorothy, I, I, think, I think you should know. I, I think I should tell you. You know what? Tell me what? Uh, Mr. Treadway isn't alone. There, there's somebody with him. Who? Uh, just somebody who wants to talk to you. What about? Listen, I, I didn't want to tell them, I swear, but when they asked me, I had to. See, had to what? Tell them what? Well, what I saw. I had to tell them what I saw. I, I, I had to. Jerry, what's wrong with I, you? I, I didn't want to. I... Oh, well, here we are. Now, remember, Dorothy, they asked me, and I had to tell them. And try not to hate me, Okay. Jerry Bissinger, his name is. He's one of the tellers. Yeah, yeah. I gathered that. Uh, Jerry has the desk right next to Doris. I know that. I mean, I mean, what kind of a guy is he? Well, he's been with the bank for five years. I uh, hired him myself. Is he uh, reliable? Well, I say so, yes. But then I, I thought Doris was. wasn't given to flights of imagination. Seeing. Thing. Oh, no, 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 I don't think so. But, uh, you know, something like this happens and you wonder, what do you really know about anybody? I mean, really know. Yeah, makes you wonder, all right. Jerry? Uh, yes, it's me, Mr. Treadway. Uh, it, it's us. Well, come in, come in, come in. Come on in, both of you. Come in. Go ahead, sit down. Well, hello, Miss Brent. Uh, will you take this chair? Oh, thank you, Mr. Treadway. Oh, uh, please, uh, permit me to introduce... The, oh, uh, this is Detective Sergeant Hobbs, Dorothy. Hello, Miss Brent. Detective? Uh, yes, uh, sit down here, Dorothy. we got a few questions to ask you, if you don't mind. No, I don't mind. You work here? Yes, of course I do. I, I'm a teller. Now, you work next to Mr. Bissinger here, don't you? Usually I do. Uh, now, you were working next to Mr. Bissinger yesterday, weren't you? In the morning, I was. Then after lunch... In the morning uh, is what I'm talking about. 10 a.m. In the morning. Now, you were working next to Mr. Bissinger, right? That's right. And at 10 a.m., a man came into the bank and walked up to your window. A man wearing a blue baseball cap. Remember that? Well, no, I, I don't actually... He shoved a note at you. And you gave him $500. Shoved a note? Ah, uh, well, maybe it looked to you like a withdrawal slip. That's what it looked like to me. Jerry. Is that what it looked like to you, Miss Brett? Or was it a note ordering you to turn over $500? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, it's not that we blame you for giving the man the money. It's, it's just too bad you didn't tell us, but, well, if you can tell us now what the note said. If you will produce the note. There isn't any note. There wasn't any man. Nothing happened, like what you're saying. Miss Brent, Mr. Bissinger saw the whole thing. Well, at first, he couldn't believe what he was seeing, but when the computer showed $500 missing... He remembered what he had seen. He didn't see anything. Tell them, Jerry, you didn't see anything like that. Tell them. But I did, Dorothy. I couldn't believe my eyes. But then later I realized that what I couldn't believe I saw, I really did see. Don't you think I'd have told somebody? Do you think I'd have let somebody walk out with $500 without telling anybody? Walk out with a bank's money just like that? Well, we thought maybe you were too frightened to say anything. Maybe the man threatened you. Maybe he had a gun. There wasn't any man. Miss Brent. If we could just see the note. There wasn't any man, and there wasn't any note. And none of this happened. Oh, Stanley. It was awful. 
just awful. Mr. Treadway and Jerry and this detective, they wouldn't believe me. They believed Jerry. Jerry, of all people, he doesn't even know me. It's all right now, honey. It's all right. No, it isn't all right. It's terrible. No, it'll all get straightened out, sweetheart. But nothing like that ever happened. There wasn't any such man. And there wasn't any note. I never gave anybody any money. You believe me, don't you? Whatever you say, honey, I believe you. Oh, you're so wonderful, Stanley. No, 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 I'm not. I, I, I just love you, that's all. Oh, that's everything. What's, what's going to happen with this thing? Huh? I don't know. They didn't say anything about it. They keep thinking the note will show up. They do? Of course it won't, because there isn't any note. Well, well after a while, they'll give up. They will, won't they? Well, of course they will, honey. So don't worry about it. I'll try not to. There. You feel sleepy? Oh, no, not a bit. Come on, come on. Put your head down on the couch. I feel like I'll never be able to sleep again. <laughs> you will. Believe me, you will now. That's it. Come on, you. put your head down. Oh, it, it won't do any good. Oh, no, yes, it will. Believe me, it will. Okay. I believe you. That's it. Now, want me to give you a little massage, hmm? Would you? Sure, I would. Sure. Now, how's that? Wonderful. Why would Jerry say something like, like that? Forget Jerry. We were never what you'd call friends. Uh, don't think about him. I never knew he hated me. Forget him. And Mr. Treadway? I always thought he liked me all right. Oh, the heck with Mr. Treadway. He gave me my job. Forget him. Okay, I will. Just think about me and go to sleep. That's it. That's it. You're getting sleepy, aren't you? Sure you are. Sure you are. A loving couple, wouldn't you say? A tender scene? A delicate exchange of devotion and dependency? But we have only completed the first act of our story. There are two more acts to follow, in which we will explore in more detail the complexities of this relationship. As of now, it would appear to be one of gentle love. Who knows? We'll come back shortly with Act Two. Is our Dorothy an innocent, naive child? Is Stanley an adoring, gullible lover? Is Jerry a malevolent influence in both their lives? And is the apparently mild but forceful Mr. Treadway only an observer to the interplay of forces which he can neither control, influence, or even comprehend? And our detective sergeant, Mr. Hobbs, what of him? Perhaps we will progress a bit further in our investigation of all these people as we listen to Act Two. Uh, listen to me, Jerry. Maybe it really was a withdrawal slip. Oh, it was, Mr. Treadway. I'd recognize one of those any place. I see enough of them. It really was one. Well, they couldn't have been a regular customer at the bank. Hmm? I never saw them before. Well, that doesn't prove anything. I've been here five years, Mr. Treadway. That ought to mean something. I, I mean... Probably the only reason I looked up is because I'd never seen him before. And it doesn't follow that there was anything written on the withdrawal slip. It could have been, well, you know, a regular transaction. Well, of course, that's what I thought it was. Only she gave him the money right away. I, I mean, she didn't consult the records or anything. She just handed it over. Uh, $500. Yeah. Then, when the computer showed $500 missing at the end of the day, that's when I connected the whole thing with Dorothy and the man in the baseball cap. Yeah, you certainly made out a case for it, Jerry. I don't see why she keeps on saying it never happened. Uh, she's coming in today, uh, any minute now. Uh... Maybe I better get out. No, 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 no. I want you here. Detective Hobbs will 
be here, too. And also, he's bringing somebody. Who? He, oh, he didn't want to tell me, so I just didn't urge it. Uh, excuse me, just a moment, will you? Uh, Mr. Treadway here. Oh, yes. Well, ask him to come in. The both of them. Oh, and uh, when Miss Brent arrives, uh, send her right in. Thank you. Well, Mr. Treadway? Yes, Detective Hobbs. Come in, sir. Come in. Mr. Bissinger, at the right name? Uh, yes, hello. Uh, how are you? I'm just fine, thank you. Uh, I would like you to meet to the... Uh, uh, Mr. Treadway? Uh, your secretary said to come right in. Oh, yes, yes, Miss Brand. Please do come come in, come in. And uh, please close the door, will you please? Now come over here and sit down, will you? I hope I'm not late or anything. Well, I was just about to introduce uh, Miss Treadway, Miss Dorothy Brent, Mr. Bissinger... This is Dr. Haywood. How are you? It's good to know you. Doctor? I hope you don't object, Miss Brent. Dr. Haywood is attached to the police department. Uh, I don't understand what he's doing here. I thought perhaps I could be of help. Help who? Well. Help me? Possibly. I don't need any help. Well, neither do I. Now, Jerry. I know what I saw, Dorothy. No, you don't, Jerry. Because nothing like what you say happened really happened. I don't know why you're doing this to me. I've never done you any harm. I don't know why you should try to hurt me. I suppose you have your reasons. Maybe I hurt you sometime without even knowing it. If I did, I wish you would tell me. And maybe we could straighten it out. But we're never going to get anywhere if you keep on telling these lies. They are not lies. I saw what I saw, and that's what I told Mr. Treadway and the detective here. Now, I haven't got anything against you, but I know what I saw. All right, now, hold on, hold on there. I know what I saw. You didn't see anything. All right, now, let's everybody take it easy. You tell her to take it easy, Doctor. Both of you take it easy, okay? Now, Mr. Bissinger... Would you be good enough to tell me what you've already told Detective Hobbs and Mr. Uh, Treadway? Would you do that for me? Just tell me briefly what you saw. He didn't see anything, Doctor. Bear with me, Miss Brent. Will you do that? Just be patient and maybe we can get to the bottom of this very perplexing situation. Which I'm sure causes you a lot of pain. Yes, it does. So... Let's allow Mr. Bissinger to proceed. All right? All right. But he didn't see anything because there was nothing to see. Go ahead, Mr. Bissinger. Well, uh, it was yesterday morning about 10 o'clock, Doctor, a little before, a little after, but about 10 a.m. This man walked up to Dorothy's station. He had on a blue baseball cap. Now, you don't see too many of those. But these days, you know, people wear anything they feel like wearing. So, uh, well, he shoved this piece of paper under the plastic window and Dorothy opened the cash drawer and took out five $100 bills and handed them to him. He took them and walked out. That's all? That's all. And I didn't think anything about it. I, well, I thought a little bit about it because we usually don't hand out that much money without checking to see if the depositor has that much in his account. But I figured she probably knew him, so I forgot about it. Until the computer showed 500 missing, and then I remembered. Did you know the man, Mr. Bissens? Never saw him before in my life, Doctor. About this piece of paper. Uh, that was a withdrawal slip. It was pink. And that's the color of our withdrawal slips. Deposits are green. Isn't it possible? The man in the baseball cap was a regular depositor and simply walked in to take out $500. Uh, let me answer that, Doctor. Yes, uh, Mr. Treadway? No withdrawal slip in that amount has turned up. Uh -huh. Well, does anyone have a theory as to why Miss Brent handed over the $500? If she did. She did. She did. And I've got a theory if nobody else has. I think the man was a bank thief. I think he wrote on the withdrawal slip that she should turn the money over to him or he'd kill her. Shoot her, maybe. Did he have a gun? Uh, I couldn't see her from where I was standing. Did Miss Brent seem frightened? Oh, I don't know. See, I didn't bother to look because at that point it never entered my head that anything peculiar was going on. That came later when the okay, computer showed okay. that... I, I think I've got the picture... Now, Miss Brent, 
I'm sure you want to say something. No. No? I've already said it. Nothing like that ever happened. Do you remember handing out five $100 bills to a man in a blue baseball cap? There wasn't any such man. But Mr. Bissinger says he saw him. He couldn't have. And he says he saw you give the man five $100 bills. He couldn't have because I didn't. I don't know why he wants to make trouble for me. I don't know why he hates me. I don't know what I've ever done to him that he should want to make... Dorothy, you've got me all wrong. That's all right, Jerry. I know you think you're telling the truth. I know that. Because basically, you're honest. Anyway, I've always thought so. But this time, you're wrong. Because nothing like what you've just said ever happened. Now, I'd like to go home, please. Hey, doctor. Let her go home, Mr. Treadway. Thank you very much. I need to be with somebody who believes me. Now, we'll be in touch, Dorothy. You know where to reach me. I expect I'll be home most of the time from now on. I feel sorry for that girl. I don't know why, but I do. Gee whiz. So do I. It's none of my business, but uh, would a lie detector do any good? Lie detector? Nah, I don't know about that. Why should I take a lie detector test? I'm telling the truth. I got no reason not to tell the truth. Well, I only I'll meant tell it. you what. I'm sorry I got mixed up in this thing in the first place. I should have known better. You try to do the right thing, and what do you get? An invitation to take a lie detector test. Let a machine decide if you're telling the truth. Well, no thanks. Not for me. No, no, no. There seems to be a contradiction between what you say and what she says. So let her take a lie detector test. I'm telling the truth. But she says she is. So let her prove it. Doctor. Doctor Hayward. Hmm? What? What do you think? Uh, oh, yes, yes. I feel sorry for her, too. No, no, I... I mean, what do you think about a lie detector test? Well, not for me. I won't take one. There is no reason why I should. Uh, Doctor, what about a lie detector test for Miss Brent? Lie detector test? Oh, no, I don't think so. Not too reliable, those tests. No, no, no. It's obvious. The poor girl is in a trance. A trance? A trance-like state would be more accurate. It's a little like somnambulism, sleepwalking. Not precisely like, because the subject isn't asleep. No, no, no. She is in a trance state. Probably she was yesterday, too. start dinner, Stanley. No, no, there's there's no rush. You tired? Mostly I'm cold. Here, want your sweater? Yeah, hand it to me, will you? Yeah, right, here you are. Here, let me help you on with it, honey. Now, were they mean to you over at the bank, huh? Not mean, exactly. The doctor was quite nice. I liked him, but he doesn't believe me either. Oh, thanks, honey. Oh, that feels good. Want me to button it up for you, huh? I can do it. Stanley, they just don't believe me. None of them. Well, they just don't know what a wonderful girl you are the way I do. Anyway, you believe me. You bet I do. Want me to answer that? No, I will. Hello? Hey, Miss Brent? Dorothy? Yes? Hey, this is Mr. Treadway, Dorothy. Hit the bank. Yes, Mr. Treadway. And I hope we weren't too hard on you this morning. That's all right. Now, you, you have to understand we're, we're all very confused about this whole thing. I do understand. <laughs> well, we, we even talked about the possibility of a lie detector test. Okay. Uh, uh, did you say... Uh, I, I said okay. You wouldn't mind? Why should I mind? Well, Mr. Bissinger minded. He, he kicked up quite a fuss about it. That's because he's not telling the truth. Well, actually, the doctor says lie detector tests are not too reliable. He, uh, he wants to see you again. Who does? The doctor does. I don't think I want to see him. You don't? I told him everything. 
I don't see why he'd want to see me again. Well, if he has an idea. I mean, I wish you would see him again, Dorothy. As a favor to me. I'm sorry, Mr. Treadway, but I don't think I can do that. I'd like to do it as a favor to you. But frankly, I'm sick of this whole thing, and I don't want to go on with it. Good night. That's that. The doctor wants to see me again, but I don't want to. You you heard what I said, Stanley? Yes, I, I think you're absolutely right. You feel okay, honey? I feel cold, kind of. You, you want me to turn the heat up? That's not a bad idea. Well, no sooner said than done. Stanley! What is it? Look. Look what I found in the pocket of my sweater. What? What, what is it? It's a... It's a withdrawal slip. You mean it? This is the sweater I had on yesterday. Dorothy, do you think that... Stanley, call Mr. Treadway and tell him I'll see the doctor. Go on, call him. And tell him I've got the note. Tell him Jerry Bissinger must have been right. Well, what, uh, what does the note say? Nothing. Not a thing. It doesn't say anything. Now what do you think of our cast of characters? To which another has been added in the person of Dr. Hayward. Is he the deus? Ex machina, who will solve the mystery of conflicting testimonies? Or will he muddy the waters even further? We'll be back shortly with the concluding act of Mind Over Mind. Dorothy has denied the truth of Jerry's contention that she had turned over $500 to a man who handed her a note at her teller's window. And then she discovers evidence that Jerry could have been right. In the pocket of her sweater, she finds a withdrawal slip, the very sort of paper Jerry claimed the note to have been written on. But complications have developed. The small slip of paper holds no message whatsoever, no writing of any kind. I, uh, I feel bad about this, Doctor. Trust me, Mr. Treadway. You know, she was so positive and so so calm about it. It's so serene. Now, I have to tell you, I believe the girl. So do I. You do? You mean you don't believe Jerry Bissinger? No, no, that's not what I mean. Oh, well, then you don't believe the both of them. Yes, I can. And yes, I do. Sounds like you've got something up your sleeve, Dr. Haywood. Well, you could say that, Doctor. Oh, excuse me. Yes. Oh, yeah, I yeah. ask you to come in, please. She's here. Good. Mr. Treadway, I'd like to be alone with her. Now, after the preliminaries, could you make up some excuse to leave? Uh, oh, yes, I suppose I could. Ah, Dorothy, hello. Hello, Mr. Treadway. Uh, you know Dr. Hayward, of course. Hello, Dr. Hayward. I am so glad you decided to come back, Dorothy. I had to. I found this. In the pocket of my sweater. Oh? May I see it? It was the same sweater I was wearing yesterday. This... This is a withdrawal slip. I know. But it's blank. There's nothing written on it at all. I know. I have some things to attend to, so if you'll please excuse me. Yes, of course. We will excuse you. Couldn't you stay, Mr. Treadway? It's, um... Better if he leaves us alone, Dorothy. Uh, but I... He'll, he'll, he'll come back, Dorothy. Now, I'll wait outside, Dorothy. Now, if you need me, I'll be right there. Well, all right. Now, don't be frightened. I'll try. Close the door, will you? Well, Dorothy? What's going to happen? Nothing very alarming. Sit in this chair, will you? All right. Good. And I am going to pull up this chair facing you. Nothing very disturbing so far. No. Tell me something. Do you like me at all? I don't even know you. I know that. This is only the second time we've met. But don't you think that we all get a certain impression of people right away? And what was your impression of me yesterday? Nice. I thought you were nice. Just nice? 
at all. Just nice. Strong. Strong but kind, too. Like... Like a... Yes? Like a... Like a father. <sighs> That's what I would like to be. Like a father. Good, strong, kind father. I like you, Dorothy. You do? Yes, I do. You're a very likable person. Now, don't, don't be embarrassed if someone likes you. Are you embarrassed? Sort of. Look in my eyes, Dorothy. Look deep into my eyes. And you'll see that I am telling the truth. You're a little bit tense, aren't you? I guess I am. Well, you just try to relax. Just let yourself go limp. Close your eyes. Now, let go of the tension. All of it. Let go. That's it. You feel it leaving you? I think so. Uh, So do I. Now, let your head fall back against the chair. That's it. That's it. Back and back. All of you is beginning to relax. Isn't it? Yes. Limp and relaxed. No tension anywhere. Right? Right. Now, Dorothy, breathe slowly, deeply, slowly and deeply. And relax. Just relax. Oh, that's good, Dorothy. That's very good. I want you to think back to yesterday. Here on the bank. It's about ten o'clock in the morning. The man is coming into the bank. He's coming up to your window. He's wearing a blue baseball cap. Remember? Do you remember? He is standing in front of your window. Remember that? Yes. Now, what does that man do, Dorothy? He's standing there. Yes. Then what does he do? He... He gives me something. He slides it under the window. What is it? It looks like a withdrawal slip. Is it? Is that what it is? Yes, that's what it is. Only, only... Only what? Is there something wrong with it? Yes. What's wrong with it? It... There's something written on it. On the back of it. What is written on it, Dorothy? It says, give me the money. So what do you do? Why, I give him the money. Why do you think you gave him that money? Because he asked for it. Good. Very good. Had you ever seen this man before? I... I don't think so, no. Look hard at him. Look at his face and tell me. Is he someone you know? Someone familiar? I can't tell. Why not? Try. Try and see it. Try and see his face. I can't. I can't. Why can't you? Because. Because. Yes, because. Because he has no face. (sighs) He has no face. He has no. No face at all. It's yeah. all right. It's all right. It's all right, Dorothy. I've got you. I've got you. <laughs> you won't fall. I won't let you fall. It's all right, Dorothy. It's all right. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You can't go in there. You're out of my way. Come on. Now, will you stay out of here? What do you think you're doing? Well, I, I couldn't stop him. I tried. What's going on? It's all right. She just fainted. She'll come round in a minute. Or two. What? What have you been doing to her? Who is this man? 
I've never seen him before. He barged in here demanding to see Dorothy, and I couldn't stop him. What is your interest in Miss Brent? I happen to love her, and I don't want anything to happen to her. No, no, don't you be alarmed. Nothing has happened to her that hasn't happened before. Many times before. I should think such as what? A little hypnotic session. I managed to regress her to the events of yesterday when a man came into the bank. A man in a blue baseball cap. And she gave him $500 without question. Simply handed it over. We think he must have threatened to kill her. Under hypnosis, she said to Mimi. She said, the note written on the back of a withdrawal slip merely said, give me the money. Yet, this slip that she found in her sweater pocket says absolutely nothing at all. I wonder why. Uh, you must have some idea, Doctor. Yes, indeed I do. I think that when she was hypnotized, it was planted in her mind that at ten o'clock, a man wearing a blue baseball cap would walk up to her window, hand her a withdrawal slip, and she would give him five $100 bills. There was no need to write anything on the slip. It was already written on her brain, if you see what I mean. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm beginning to. Now, under this most recent hypnosis, she remembered the man, his blue baseball cap, remembered giving him the money, remembered everything except... except his face. She... she couldn't remember his face? She said, he has no face. She repeated it several times. He has no face. Now, why, when she remembered everything else so well, why would she run up against a block when it came to the man's face? I'll tell you why. Because the face was the face of someone she cared for, even loved. Am I right? Am I close to the truth? Well? Doctor. Mm. Look, she's opening her eyes. What happened? You fainted, that's all. Do you remember what happened before you fainted? I was remembering. Yes, you were remembering what happened when the man in the blue baseball cap came up to your window and handed you a note written on a deposit slip. Yes, that happened. And you gave him $500. Yes, I did. Now, when I asked you what the man looked like, you said... Uh, do you remember what you said? I said, he has no face. And then you fainted. Now, Dorothy, I want you to take a look at this man. Uh, step over here, you. Let's get a good look at you. That's, that's it. Now, Dorothy, who is this man? Well, why, it's Stanley. Yes. Can you picture him with a blue baseball cap on his head? Stanley, you, you came into the bank. You came up to the window. You handed me the note. I gave you the money. But why? Why did I do that? Because, because I hypnotized you, sweetheart. Why, why you were asleep the night before. Doctor... You know that natural sleep can be changed into hypnotic sleep. Yes, of course I know. Well, I've been doing this to Dorothy for a long time. Why would you want to do that? Well, I, I don't know. To be sure I wouldn't lose her, maybe. To see if I still had this magical power. See, I've had it, you know, since I was a kid. But I just never used it before to get money. And now you have. No, 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 not to keep. I mean, I never meant to keep it. I, magical powers can't be used, you know, for material gain. Oh, here. here. Here's your $500. If I kept it, my powers of magic would just disappear. Yes, of course. Oh, magic is always amazing, isn't it? Well, but I, I, I think I'll, I'll be going. I'll leave Dorothy with you. Yes. 
I think you'd better. All right. Oh, I'll be waiting at home for you, Dorothy. When you feel like it. If you feel like it. I never knew. I never thought. Why would Stanley want to do something like that to me? Well, he, he ought to be horsewhipped. I, I'd like to beat him up myself. Do you feel like going home to him, Dorothy? I don't know. How can I? Uh, if I if I might make a suggestion, please do. Hey, Dorothy, uh, would you would you care to come and stay with my mother? She she'd be very happy if I took you home with me uh, for a while. I mean, until all this wears off. She'd like you. She'd take good care of you. And so would I. So you see, it was a love story after all, wasn't it? Two love stories. Stanley's love, which demanded that he control his sweetheart at all times. And the love of Mr. Treadway who merely wanted to protect. Which of the two loves will Dorothy choose? Which would she? I'll be back shortly. Each of us has at one time, I'm sure, been in love. Think. Did it not partake of the nature of hypnosis? Did not your lover appear clad in shining raiment, without flaw, without weakness, without sin? Why, of course. Then did the day arrive when you awoke from your hypnotic trance and you saw your lover to be nothing more than a fragile, flawed human being. And you were shocked and stunned and wondered why you had ever fallen in love in the first place. Of course, But we won't dwell on this unhappy discovery. Only trust that you weathered it well and emerged intact. Our cast included Jada Rowland, Earl Hammond, Bernard Grant, and Russell Horton. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is Tammy Grimes inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant... Mm-hmm.